How we all get along today? Well, we're, st we're still here in the great state of Georgia, and we're at Pickett's Mill Battlefield site. It was fought. The Union troops came up here. I think they numbered, oh, what was it? Oh, shoot, 12, 14,000 Union troops on their way to Atlanta. Somebody thought it would be wise to try to come up through this valley and uh, push out 10,000 Confederate troops that were entrenched in here at the top of the ridge all along. A lot of the earthen works are still intact. I don't know whether the video is going to show it or not, but there's quite a few earthen works down through this timber, you know, probably because it was never farmed or anything to destroy them like most of the battlefields were. So this battle was fought on May 27th, 1864. Um, I think uh, New Hope Church was another v battle with just in a few days of here. But uh, it didn't work out so good. So after the Yankee troops marched all day and came here, somebody thought it was a wise decision to attack these positions in the dark. So I think the battle started around 5 p.m. And it looked more like it would have been a turkey shoot. There is no way you could have made it up through this draw unscathed. A lot of the trench works still laying up here on top of the hill. They don't show up very good on film. But just the hill itself, you know, trying to get up through here. Would have been pretty frightful, frightful under a volley of fire. So General Howard was in command of the 14,000 federal troops. I don't know whether it was his decision or not to try to take this hilltop, but uh, pretty poor call on his part. Uh, General Claiborne, he was the commander of the Confederate forces up here on top, but it didn't turn out so good. Federals lost around 1,600 men. Confederates lost around 500. The family that had the farmstead here, uh, their house was used throughout the battle. Said it was a two-story structure. Um, bottom side was used as command. Probably all their outbuildings and stuff were probably used as field hospitals. Said most of their outbuildings were destroyed. House was destroyed. Nobody really knows where the family moved off to. Just says that uh, the house wasn't rebuilt. A lot of trails here if you like to go for a nice little hike in the woods. We're here dark and early in the morning. Got here first thing when they opened up. Hardly anybody here. Kind of quiet and peaceful down in here this morning, but it sure wasn't in 1864. We're down toward the bottom of the ravine now looking up. That just looks like a daunting task. I wouldn't want to climb up out of here today without the trail, let alone under fire. So on down here in the bottom, there is a pretty good ditch that would have offered some cover, but you know, you had to leave that cover sometime to get on up on top of the ridge. Said there was two field artillery pieces used. Uh, one of them, I believe, was a howitzer. It is still on site in the museum. Uh, when the Yankees pulled back, I think it was abandoned. The barrel had been slugged, so it couldn't be used. But cannon wouldn't have done a whole heck of a lot of good down in here. I mean, it depends on what the tree cover was like then, but it would have took a while to get a whole knock through this. Trails are all relatively well marked, color coded. You see we're on the red, white, and blue trail. These trails split off. And for the rock hounds in y'all, there is quartz scattered everywhere. Kind of cool to look at. Seen several different specimens. I should have videoed one back in there a little ways back. It was actually grown into the base of a tree. As you reach the bottom of the ravine, you see it opens on up into a field below us there. That's where the uh, Union troops were stationed or gathered anyway. One Confederate soldier was said to have said that he uh, didn't have to aim his rifle. He just shot downhill and he was bound to hit something. You squeeze that many troops into this small of an area, boy, that would have been a sight. There's several side ravines, you know, that would have offered some cover and concealment, but no matter what, you've been fighting uphill. And there's some earthen works in there. They sure blend in good with all this leaf litter, but uh, take my word for it, they're there. Looks relatively intact. Man, I'd love for somebody to turn me loose into a site like this with my metal detector. Just to find a few things. 
up in my neck of the woods, mainly guerrilla warfare up in Missouri. Uh, my county was pro-Union. There was a few skirmishes. Uh, they did tar and feather one Confederate sympathizer and run him out of town. Was a Confederate garrison about 20 miles away in Four City, Missouri. Had a big Union garrison overlooking the river there in St. Joe, Missouri. But just not a whole lot of, you know, action. It was kind of spread out. So no real good places to metal detect to find anything. Like I said, got some really nice trails, not hard to hike. Uh, one thing I thought was a great use of our tax dollars for non-skid surface on these old wet wooden planks, they just use shingles. That is a great idea. I think I'll take it home and use that on my front step, that same idea. Easy to replace, easy to come by, and relatively cheap. Couldn't ask for better non-skid surface. So we're here in mid-March. Not much cover at all, leaf cover. With the battle being fought in May, I would assume this area would have greened up a little bit and had more cover. Green's just starting to come on, and for you rock hounds, there's a nice piece of milky quartz there. Got some red staining in it. That'd make some good slices. One thing I wish they'd uh, do, but I know it detracts from the natural beauty and everything, but just call out a few of the earthen works. They're kind of you know, eroded in. Sometimes they're hard to spot. But like here's one all along the base of this tree. Connects across up that draw and runs back along those down trees there. Just kind of hard to pick out in here, but I understand. Everybody wants something different. So the red, white, and blue trail has split off, and we're following the white trail. This has got a lot more prominent earthworks. Got some big old pits dug. It goes all along here. Got interconnecting trench, follows along the backside of them, ties them in. But yeah, there was some substantial work digging there. Just think, that was dug with whatever they could get a hold of. From their hands, bayonets, shovels, picks, you know, just whatever they could get. Piled logs on top to protect them. Took a lot of work put into this fortification. Well, there you go. If I just walked on around the corner, they've got a nice little sign here describing that. Yeah, this was the battery site for the Union artillery. When I first saw those pits, I thought that was more than just earthen works, you know, protect trenches and what have you. So this is where your guns were placed. Said uh, these were dug during the night of May 27th. Said there was some Hotchkiss shells dug up here. Some other things in the excavation. Looks like the old bark beetles have been hard at work on top of this ridge. A lot of the old trees are down. I'd say they've cut them down for safety rather than just hanging them there. For them to fall on somebody or come down in a storm at the most inopportune moment. But boy, they've, they've done a number up in here on top of this ridge. So up here, I'm assuming this was part of the Union line, but this trench works is extremely well preserved. I mean, it's, you know, definite. You can see it. That's pretty cool. Well, up here where the trail runs along part of the old Civil War, pre-Civil War road, where some of their artillery was set up, they've moved in, uh, I think his camp was built in 1853, moved in from another site. Definitely not original to here, but still interesting to say the least, and some really nice stonework done on that chimney. So I put a lot of effort into restoring it. Got her popped up off the ground, sill logs all look good. Boy, look at the size of them logs. Them some good sized trees. I don't have my tape on me, but you know, those are good. What, maybe 20 inches across there on the bottom. Got some outbuildings, look like they may do some reenactments here. Maybe some living history presentations nothing going on today you know we're kind of here early in the year still pretty cool view from the backside another view of them big old beams down at the bottom got some nice dovetail work where she was put together it suffered some shrinkage but uh some old dovetail shed water just like they were supposed to a couple ends of logs are deteriorated but Nothing like what you see back in my area. There's nothing like this left unless they clabber sided over the outside of it to protect it. 
you know, these old log cabins built well, built good, built to stand, test of time. As long as you kept a roof on them, they'd stand forever. Pretty interesting. Got a nice fire ring with some quartz. Looks like corn crib, maybe a smokehouse. Say chicken coop. You got the old one seater outhouse. And look, they even left a pile of logs for next time. A lot of the old hewing left in her, rough logs. Look at the bottom of that beam there. That's a good size one. And when they did their, their restoration here, they did a pretty darn good job and tried to stay as period as possible. Check out them nails. Old rod iron, stamped out nails. No screws in that. Got the old blacksmith strapped hinges up there. I'd be curious to know if those are original or not. Got some repair work down there. I don't know whether that beam was put in out of place for a reason or whether that's just a spot they had to cut out and repair, but they did the best they could blend it in. It still looks good. Katie bar the door. Y'all look up where that saying came from. So, as we walk down this Civil War era road here, part of one of the trails, I'm going to wrap things up, won't bore you with, with no more. Museum ain't huge. Battlefield's not huge and sprawling like Gettysburg. You know, not a lot of fancy, you know, cannons laying around, you know, a lot of uh, prep work. You know, just kind of rustic and natural. Not well visited, don't look like. Come here early in the morning, pretty much got the place to yourself. Unlike we stopped at the Kennesaw Battlefield there yesterday, and oh my God, sensory overload. Too many people, we didn't even get out of the vehicle. Packed her up and just come on up here. But highly recommend it if you get in this part neck of the woods. Be sure to like, subscribe. Let me know what you're thinking to comment, what kind of videos you'd like to see. Do a little rock hounding, do a little mechanical repair work creating things. So let me know what you think. Y'all have a good one.